What's up agents, Jetforth here, and here is the full shock and awe build video. Now this build definitely is the most obnoxious and most mechanically driven build that I have ever seen and that I have ever built. There is a lot of things that you have to do to get all of your bonuses proc for you to get your max damage and max bonus armor and everything else that's going on with it. So I will absolutely do my best to explain all of this because in all honesty, my little feeble brain here even is struggling to getting used to the overall play style of it and there's a lot of other changes and stuff that can be made to this which we will talk about at the end of the video of other things you can do along with your suggestions and everything else that you would want to leave in the old comment section down below anyways like comment and subscribe and let's just get into this because this is probably going to be a pretty long build video not gonna lie and oh yeah a shout out to these boneheads again for the 58th millionth time because without them this build wouldn't have been possible all right i'm shutting up let's get into it Alrighty, for our specialization we will be using gunner for but not limited to incessant killing enemies grants 10 percent armor coupler every third reload is 50 percent faster and this does absolutely work with the sweet dreams so every time you roll and you gain two rounds it is counting towards this probably shouldn't but it does. Hardened armor kits. Armor kits repair 100% armor and grant 50% bonus armor for 10 seconds. Barrage. Rate of fire increases by 5% on kill for 5 seconds. And then finally in placement. 20% weapon handling while not moving need to be motionless for 1 second. This is just good for our primary weapon or I guess technically our secondary weapon. When it is not the optimal time to rush in and destroy everything. Mostly safe for PvP or a heroic mission, so this is still good to have. But other than that, yeah, I am completely and utterly guilty of not completely unlocking my gunner, so I'm actually not using this build to its full potential because, yeah, I slacked on this because I thought it was garbage. I mean, it is garbage, but... Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say. Oh yeah, and then all the other fun accoutrements this specialization comes with. And on to weapons. For my not-so-shotgun weapon, which we really won't be using all that much, I have a Tactical UMP-45 replica. Now, in all honesty, you can use anything you want here. For my specific talents, I'm using Preservation. Killing an enemy repairs 10% armor over 5 seconds. Headshot kills improve the repair. Which, this is just because, why not add to the over all insane amount of armor regeneration that we have going on already but again th this is kind of up in the air on what you want to use here distance plus 15 percent optimal range which is good for smgs and the tactical ump is just obnoxious when it comes to range and damage anyways and not to babble too much but the reasoning in using this is because this has more damage without any bonuses on it than any other auto rifle or anything that i have found so far you can see my eagle bear in there is only 15.9 this is 21 Point nine, so is what it is. And then stop, drop, and roll. While equipped, rolling removes burning, bleed, and poisoned status effects can occur once every 60 seconds. Honestly, we do technically kind of need this for how close proximity we are when destroying everything and the amount of hazard is effects we are going to be taking between blowing up crap and shooting grenade bags on npcs and whatnot as well as the whole pvp bleed damage meta that is going on but I am at odds with this talent, whether or not I want to put in rhythm here so we can get our jammer pulse back once every encounter, because that's generally how it would go. You'd really only get it once because, you know, encounters don't last that long. I don't know. I'm at odds with that. I will let you guys decide that in your own build really that's kind of where i'm at on that on to our shotgun which is one of the most important parts of this build which will be the sweet dreams and or the lullaby depending on if you have the pre-order bonus or not if you do not have this you can get it from any outcast boss so dcd roosevelt island west potomac event center and so on talents sweet dreams landing a melee attack on an enemy after swapping to this weapon grants 60 percent bonus armor for five seconds applies the sandman debuff for five seconds killing an enemy with the sandman debuff reapplies the bonus armor so this is one of the
of the ways where we're getting so much bonus armor, and that is stacking on top of the Sawyer's knee pads as well. Sandman, this debuff prevents the enemy from using armor kits and from receiving healing from any sources. I see this more as a PvP talent, honestly. And then Evasive, while equipped, dodging reloads 25% of your current weapon magazine, which is two rounds, and if drawn, dodging grants plus 20% weapon damage for 10 seconds. Now when you put all of these together and use them in unison, so say you run up, swap your weapon, melee, dodge out of the way, shoot them, you are gaining so much bonus armor and a ton of bonus damage that it's just i it's ridiculous is the best way to explain it on to the sidearm which i am sticking with the a shotgun theme and going with a double barrel to sawed off damage 248.8k to 20 rpm to meg i am sure you were all familiar with the sidearm a premeditated weapon damage is increased for every shell loaded to the max of plus 25 percent if all shells are reloaded then all weapon damage is increased Increased by an additional 10% damage. Buff lasts for 10 seconds. Allegro plus 10% rate of fire. And then mainly greased. While holstered, weapon swap speed is increased by 10%. So this is between flipping back and forth between our primary and our sweet dreams to get our sweet dreams buff. And now on to armor. For the mask, I will be using a Gila Guard for the plus 5% total armor. And yes, we are using two Gila Guard for the plus 20% hazard protection, which again, we will need for the amount of blowing up on stuff that is blowing up on us stuff thing and stuff attributes plus a 15,921 health plus a 54% damage to elites talents hard hitting plus 25% damage to elites and then this comes with one utility mod slot which doesn't matter because I cannot get my skill power high enough to use any of the mods that I have because like I've said previously I am a skill builder and all of my mods are god roll so sorry for that yeah i just can't use them maybe you can but i can't next up we have the zero f's badger tough chest piece which yes this is named we are using two badger tough for the plus a seven percent damage to elites and the plus a 15 percent armor on kill attributes a 20,147 health plus 22 percent total armor and plus seven percent weapon damage talents Perfectly unbreakable. 100% of max armor is repaired when your armor is depleted. Armor kits used within the next 7 seconds are not consumed, can occur once every 60 seconds. For the mod slots, we have one offensive and one defensive. For the offensive, I'm using plus 1% weapon damage, plus 2% pistol damage, and plus 5% shotgun damage. Defensive mod slot, plus 5,702 armor, plus 1.5% total armor, and 2,727 armor on kill, which is adding to the plus 15% armor on kill for the Badger Tough. On to the holster, which this is our second piece of Badger Tough, again adding the plus 7% damage to elites and the plus 15% armor on kill. Attributes 11,705 health, 8,849 armor on kill, and plus 45% skill haste, which I opted for that just to bring down our 90 second cooldown on our jammer pulse down to 62 seconds, I believe is what it's at. And then this comes with a utility mod slot. And again here, I just slap this on just whatever to put it on i can't really do anything with this because of my mods and on to the backpack which this is our second piece of gila guard giving us the plus five percent total armor and plus 20 percent hazard protection again we want that hazard protection attributes plus 13.5 percent total armor plus 25,436 armor plus 17,967 health now this is a pretty awesome roll and i made it even more awesome which this is kind of weird how this works and i I'll explain it. Talents hardened plus 15% armor and then efficient. Using an armor kit has a 50% chance to not consume whatever I'm not using this talent. Now the strange thing about this talent is is this does not work with unbreakable but when I first log in or if you put a build together that you're stuck with this if you want to get rolls like I did or roll the backpack how I did it's going to deactivate Unbreakable before it deactivates this. So what you are going to want to do is throw on a different backpack 
that has the extra blues on it to unlock Unbreakable and then switch to this. That will activate Unbreakable and deactivate this if you're following me. Interesting enough, I would say. And this backpack comes with an offensive mod slot and a defensive mod slot. My mods are plus 1% weapon damage, plus 5% shotgun damage, plus 2% pistol damage. Defensive mod slot, 5,107 armor, plus 2,673 health, plus 2.5% health and that's it for that bad boy on to our gloves which we will be using a Raldi holdings for the plus 10 percent accuracy mainly for our smg or whatever else you decide to use attributes plus 10 percent shotgun damage i wish i had 12 but rng talents wicked when you apply a status effect gain 15 percent weapon damage for 20 seconds and this does a stack on top of the sweet dreams bonus so you will be outputting some serious damage with your shotgun and finally we have our sawyer's knee pads in which you can get these anywhere in the world but i would highly recommend farming for them wherever the targeted loot is knee pads talents short circuit plus 80 percent jammer pulse charge speed for your skills your jammer pulse will pretty much instantaneously expand and then blow up which is pretty great feel like trump there which is pretty great we're gonna build a wall first wave tech disruption effects destroy hostile skill proxies after staying in cover for four seconds you gain the lead by example buff lead by example gain 50 percent bonus armor while performing a cover to cover if the distance traveled is at least eight meters disrupt all enemies within 10 meters and gain 10 percent bonus armor for each blue for four seconds the disrupt occurs one second after completing the cover to cover so as you're bum rushing them with your first wave tech you're not really going to lose any armor because you're getting your 50 percent bonus armor during your cover to cover maneuver then after the disruption happens you're getting another well i'm getting 120 percent bonus armor which is roughly a little bit over half of my actual armor is turning into the blue bonus armor and then that will last for four seconds so once you do all your sweet dreams maneuvers with the melees the rolling and killing the sandman and all that stuff you're gonna have pretty much a crap load of bonus armor throughout the entire encounter of that you are encountering if you will and if you watch the very beginning closely you can watch the blue armor go up and down as i'm going through that very very small encounter so it's pretty ridiculous how this all works together in unison as for the skills I'm obviously using the jammer pulse, which is pretty ridiculous and fun because it's putting the jammer effect on them, giving you your extra damage with wicked. For my other skill, I'm just using my cluster seekers. In all honesty, you could use whatever you want here. I just didn't know what to use. Maybe extra heals or maybe the deflector drone for PvP so you're not getting hit so hard while you're rushing in. Just an extra line of defense, if you will. Some of the extra suggestions that I have, if you can work this in, if your build works out better than I have it, is maybe use Creeping Death or even Spotter. If you can get hard hitting in a different spot, or like I said, if you get better rolls on stuff than I do, you'll have more maneuverability of your gear and whatnot. So Creeping Death would be cool. Adding some spotter into it would be pretty cool. And then honestly, if you could, even getting safeguard on it, like you would have to manipulate your defensive and your offensive numbers and stuff to get there, but you, it's only by one. So really, you could probably do some pretty cool stuff with this. I was going to sit here and mess around with it, but I, it'd probably be days of me screwing around with this build and never ever posting it if I did all of that. It just, it's one of those things, you know? But either way, that's it for the build, you know? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Low. hopefully I did this justice I don't feel like I did and in all honesty I should probably re-record the original gameplay video I did to actually show better how what this build is doing and whatnot but we'll save that for another day because I've already been at making this video for about eight or nine hours now and I am just burnt and completely bored of it so yeah comment let me know hit the old like button for me if you could subscribe and all that other junk and I will catch you all on the flip side Peace.